Hello and welcome to Let's Play Confrontation with me, Bring It Dawn. Confrontation was developed by Cyanide Studio and published by Focus Home Interactive. It was released in April of 2012 and is a fantasy strategy RPG. Now I have played through this game before and to be honest my first playthrough was not entirely positive. Granted I was playing on the hardest difficulty and some of the levels in this game can be a real slog. With that said, I am going to try to go into this playthrough with a fresh perspective and give the game a proper second chance. Also, I want to make mention of the artwork in this game. I think it's phenomenal and is what initially wrote me into it. And now we'll start a new game. I'm going to play on normal and get started. War rages everywhere across Arklash. In this, the final confrontation. The Ragnarok. The peoples tear each other to pieces in the name of light, destiny, or darkness. Everywhere, heroes chosen by the gods gather their armies under banners bearing such symbols as the Jackal, the Griffin, the Wolf, or the Scorpion. These heroes accomplish valiant feats of arms, of faith, or magic. The Ivory Jews to the north of the desert of the Sayahalna have become a battlefield of the Ragnarok. The Griffin army from the Holy Lands of Akalani is waging a merciless crusade against the devotees of the Scorpion and their alchemical beasts. New combat clones, the Mechasiatis, created by the perverted science of the Technomancers, decimate the ranks of the Griffin Templars. For the moment, Akilanian patrols sent into the desert are never seen again. The forces of darkness are about to secure a decisive victory in this corner of Arklash. From the outpost of his commandery at the gates of the Ivory Dunes, Sered, the commander of the Griffin Templars, has just entrusted a highly important mission to Darius, his finest officer. At the head of a hand-picked squad, Darius must discover the source of the Mechasiatis combat clones and put an end to their proliferation. He will be accompanied by Lothair the Inquisitor, Lanwis the Thalion, and Zelia the Pyromancer. Their goal is to find one of the secret underground laboratories where the Technomancers develop their clones. The frequency of Saiha attacks leads them to believe that a Scorpion laboratory is situated relatively close to the front line, so that enemy ranks can be easily replenished. Lanwis, an exceptional scout, has already narrowed down the search zone. The squad has spread out in order to best cover the area, but the Saiha are lurking. It is often said, that close to the many ruins which litter the ivory dunes, it is possible to hear from the depths the cries the unfortunate who do not find death at the hands of the scorpion clones. Others ascribe the sounds to the winds which howl through the dunes. The squad is spread out and the members are isolated, making them vulnerable to scorpion ambush, which would put an end to their mission. Darius decides to gather his companions. Together. <laughs> Everything is voice acted except for the last word. Chapter 1 The Ivory Dunes. Garages. Darius must find his allies. And the rest of that is tutorial stuff. Understood. Pretty straightforward. A little janky movement. Don't remember it being that rough. Your service. Right, let's look at what we've got over here. So we have Holy Prayer. 
Uh, heals 250 life. Lasts for 15 seconds. Costs 50 stamina. Uh, we have Exaltation of Soldiers. A 25 hit chance, duration 15 seconds. Increases hit chance for the user and allies around him. Uh, this regenerates user's life. We don't have the other stuff yet. Straight away. Also, gotta hand it to the guy during the initial cutscene, uh, the voice actor, had a lot of enthusiasm. <laughs> really drew me in. Uh, good. Now let's explore the zone. All right, not gonna worry about all that. Yes. All right, there's a scorpion enemy in the vicinity. The units can see their enemies before they themselves are detected. Use this advantage to analyze the situation and define your tactics. The rest of that's all pretty straightforward. Uh, do battle and kill the scorpion. Perfect. Now, the Scorpion Crossbowman was alone, but it will not always be so. When your character is not engaged in combat, and if he is not affected by any spell or skill, health points will rapidly regenerate. Rest areas for a few moments to allow him to recover all his health points, and then continue exploring. So the layout of this game is you'll spawn into a map, and you have some primary objectives you have to knock out, and there's some secondary stuff you can do as well. It is all very linear. Good. You found one of your men, Lanwis, a Griffin Thalion. And the rest of it's all tutorial stuff. What does he do? He has Divine Favor, heals and restores mana to the user and allies around it. I do wish this icon was blue. Remember that? Throw me off a few times uh, the first time I played through. And Marin's Justice. It's like strength and sword damage on the target. For the temple! For the night! From this position, the Griffin soldiers can survey the zone that they must cross in order to reach their objective, the Scorpion Laboratory. The dunes are, no doubt, crawling with enemy patrols. Two units will stand no chance. Forward. Quick save. Also, I don't think the artwork for the portraits matches Watch. that of the rest of the game. Now this time, several enemies are waiting for you, but your group is ready to take them on. Lanwis is an all-rounder, a good fighter, but he can also regenerate health points for nearby ally units during a fight. Yeah, he pause the game during combat with space. And uh, set up or buffer actions with shift. Straight away. In the name of Mary. That. This out. Yes, so be it. So be it. Why is his health not regenerating? There it is. And it's not the worst idea to wait for your abilities to come off cooldown before pushing forward. Understood. Otherwise, you put yourself in quite the predicament. 
Okay, I'm going to butcher some of these pronunciations, I'm sure. Uh, there is a Daciatis clone nearby. He's a powerful opponent, but he is isolated. But as he is isolated, the Griffins can deal with him without too much difficulty. This provides a good occasion to analyze a combat situation. The color of each skill indicates the category to which it belongs. Damage equals red, support equals green, increase equals yellow, production equals magenta, <laughs> anti-magic equals blue, and control equals black. Uh, when a unit is under the influence of an effect, a color marker is displayed next to his image. So be it! Get wrecked, loser. Good. Forward. For the night. The Inquisitor and Pyromancer have been attacked. We must treat them quickly, but uh, excuse me, before they succumb to their wounds. Forward. Can't reach the target. He's right there. Yes. Good. Yes, I did not remember that mechanic. All right, so we have Lothair. Lothair and Zelia have joined your squad. Lothair is a Griffin Inquisitor. He can cast a spell over the weapons of his allies and can invoke Merwin's fire. Zelia is a pyromancer, a magician who masters the arts of cleansing by fire. Right, so Lothair has purifying flame, or sorry, purifying fire. It's defaulted to flame. Inflicts magical damage on the target. And flaming weapon adds magical damage to the target's weapon. And Zelia, igneous cage, inflicts magical damage over time and binds the target. And stun. Immobilizes target. Understood. At once. This is a sanctuary zone. There are no enemies in sight, and the fallen Acalanians will have the time to recover from their injuries. The discovery of a Sanctuary Zone earns experience for your team, and it also cancels out any experience gained penalties on units who have fallen in previous combats. Straight away. Got ourselves some bandages. Forward! Alright, certain passages may be too narrow, especially for a large number of units engaged in hand-to-hand -hand fighting. This is why many characters can change weapons to engage in ranged combat. Try to change Lanwis's weapon. His two pistols will allow him to remain very effective, and not get in the way of other fighters. Everyone else have. What actually changes the stats? The damage 40, attack round 1.5, hit chance 5. I swap to this. So the shield actually does something. Yeah, however, the banner. He yeah, just has the one weapon. Let's 
So she has a strength and an intelligence weapon. He has three circles between his weapons. I don't know what those are for yet. What does this do? So hit chance one. Melee AR? Armor? And yeah, we'll have that equipped. It'll be our tank. At your sir. In the name of Merit! So this ability is exclusive to swords, which makes sense. It's what's in the description. It also swaps his weapon back to swords if you try to use it. And that's all she wrote. For the night. At your service. This type of chest contains elements to enhance weapons and armor. Okay. Each character can improve his armor or his two choices of weapon via an equipment tree. Except for Lothair, who only has the one weapon. This is made up of five levels, which are unlocked as the character progresses. However, each branch, only one upgrade is possible. Using one automatically excludes the other. Equipment points belong to the squad as a whole, so you should al allocate them wisely. Straight away. All right, so you can grab these. Can I swap between companions? Yeah, they're over here. All right, so for Darius, we can improve his armor with plus three magical armor or plus three physical armor. And we can choose between the weapons, right? Just the one. A weapon, too. Yeah, physical damage to his hammer and shield. Or constitution. Oh, that's pretty good. So the standard has some buffs you can get. Adds physical damage to the weapons of the unit and allies around it. Or adds physical damage to the unit's weapon. So five versus two for everybody. That's probably the way to go. What does Landwiz get? His swords, adds physical damage to the unit's weapon, or 
increases likelihood of hitting with both weapons at once. And for his pistols, increases chances of critical damage, increases units hit chance. His armor is the same, it looks like, magical or physical. Uh, Lothair, same thing. He has the one weapon, adds physical damage to the unit's weapon, or increases unit's hit chance. And Zelia. Same armor upgrades. Alright, so for her... Staff, I think they're both staves, aren't they? Uh, adds magical damage to the unit's weapon, or lowers cooldowns for all unit skills. And then evasion, uh, lowers chances of being hit, or lowers cooldowns for all unit skills. Pretty tough call. And these aren't all of our companions. I'm thinking we do this. Make everyone a little stronger, right? We only have the one point. And this benefits everybody. Because at, at most you add five physical damage. This is adding eight total. So, do I want to use that or do I want to use the hammer and shield? Well, I guess, can I, I can reset it. Can I reset it any time? Probably not. I do like the hammer and shield quite a bit, but this is definitely the way to go. Too good to pass up, but armor-wise, it doesn't matter. Um, it looks like magical armor is actually harder to come by, because every other level, it's a chance to dodge instead. But you get physical armor every level. So I'm going to get the magic armor here. And then physical, magic, physical, magic. Good. Uh, let's also make sure we have our other weapons set out. I should have looked all the way down the tree to see which one of those is better, actually. I mean... Yeah, this is definitely the way to go. Increases hit chance for the unit and allies around him. Adds physical damage to the weapons of the unit and allies around him. Hit chance. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. You get a ton of physical armor and constitution this way, but... Understood. You now know enough to play. Well, thank you. Explore the surrounding dunes and find the entrance to the laboratory. Note the four icons which may be displayed to the left of the health bar when you move your cursor over a unit. These indicate the character's role. Tank, fighter, mage, or support. These provide a rough but useful idea of a character's function. You may move the portraits of your heroes in order to change their positions. Note that the order in which you place these portraits determines where a hero is positioned within the group. That's a little redundant. You advise to play your tank on the front line. You'll be the first one attacked by the enemy, at least at the outset of combat. Knight. Wait, where's the, uh... The color coding? So be it. Yeah, so be it. I thought there was a map key as well. In the name of Merin. For the light. At your service. Let us dance. Ha! 
Another resounding success for Darius and the squad. Don't miss anything. Find as many upgrades for as we the can. Temple. Yes. All right, this definitely looks like something. Doesn't mean that it is. For the light. Yeah, it turns out it is nothing. Forward. Right, so there's the entrance and a bridge. This is all side. No, that's the way forward. This is side stuff. There's a chest For up there. The temple. Now I see it. All right, let's make sure my tank is up front. In the name of Merin. Health to regenerate before we proceed. At once, in the name of Merit. Bandages. Good. I haven't leveled up yet. Good. Understood. At your service. Check under the bridge real quick. Make sure there aren't any trolls lurking under Stretch there. Away. See anything? Now we're just about at the end. For the night. She's about to go down. Hey, we leveled up though. I uh, will send Lothair back to pick him up. Or her up. Please, thank you. At your service. I didn't realize she was even being targeted until right before she went down. In the name of Merin. Uh, so now she has Source of Fire. Sacrifices a part of the user's life to restore mana. And Darius has Frontal Assault. Charges and provides the, sorry, provokes the target. Provides. <laughs> At once. Oh, words. For the temple. 
A Saiha camp hides the entrance to laboratory number SO426. This is where the mission really begins for Darius, Lothair, Lanwis, and Zelia. A CR camp hides the entrance to laboratory number SO426. Oh, the same thing that the voice actor just said. All right. All right the Acalanian Griffins have leveled up. They've gained attribute points, which can be allocated via character's data sheet. Straightforward. So strength seems to be the way to go for most folks. They only get the one point, so still get intelligence. Just lean into whatever our highest attribute is. Uh, Lothair, strength. Yeah, so I guess if they're grayed out, it's just not recommended. Uh, wisdom is actually his highest one. Let's read what these do. So strength. Strength affects damage inflicted in hand-to-hand -hand combat, as well as the chance of making a lethal blow. A unit which suffers damage that brings its number of health points below 1 must receive a lethal blow in order to be slain. The greater the damage, the greater the chance the blow will be lethal. Constitution. Increases the unit's number of health points, as well as the duration of its agony, should the unit take a lethal blow. Agility increases the unit's accuracy, the level of physical damage inflicted in ranged attacks, as well as the chance of making critical hits with weapons. Vivacity reduces the unit's chance of being hit in both hand-to-hand -hand and ranged attacks. Moreover, Vivacity has a slight impact on a unit's speed of movement. Intelligence increases the effectiveness of damage, red, and control black skills. Intelligence also reduces the chances of skills being resisted by the enemy. Mana regeneration increases by 0 0.02 per point of intelligence. And Wisdom. Wisdom affects the effectiveness of buff yellow, debuff purple, anti-magic blue, and support green skills. It also increases the chance of resisting the effects of magic. Mana regeneration increases by 0 0.05 per point of Wisdom. Uh, this is the guy that had his one. Maybe it's worth putting points into Wisdom here. And, uh, Darius. Alright, I'm gonna call it here. Uh, next time we will push forward into the Seahar camp and see if we can't find that uh, laboratory. But for now, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.